Welcome back. Uh, we continue our discussion with surface tension. And what we now do, so we have understood surface tension and effects of surface tension, particularly in terms of hydrophobicity and hydrophilicity. In this particular lecture, we take a bit detail, a molecular level look of surface tension. Uh, we have already talked about so, this is let us say uh, you had a bulk and then you have created a surface. So, what happens is that you are essentially in order to create the surface, you are overcoming the interactions between uh, the two, between the molecules present on the both sides. So, let us say you have a bulk like this, you have these molecules and uh, you can create a surface, let us say you cut it out. So, you are in fact switching off the interaction between these molecules. So, uh, we have also seen that the coordination number, we already have understood that the surface molecules are under coordinated as compared to the bulk molecules and therefore, there is a net inward force on these surface molecules, which manifests in the surface energy or surface tension. In fact, the net inward force where the bulk is pulling the surface molecules inside is responsible uh, for the term surface tension, why it, the surface molecules are supposedly always under tension, they are pulled inward. And this is also responsible where if you have a finite volume of liquid resting on a solid surface, it does not remain flat, but it in fact takes a hemispherical shape as we have already talked in the context of Young Laplace equation. Now, what we are going to look here is, uh, let us say we look into the interface between two condensed phases, one and 2. So, if we look that exemplify the picture a bit, uh, uh, let us say the red represents the molecules of 1 and green represents the molecules of 2, we identify two molecules, let us say this molecule and this molecule. What we do in order to get a expression of about the surface and interfacial tension. Suppose, what we do is, we keep these molecules once at the surface and then we take them back into the bulk or let us say we have the same pair, we have identified these two molecules. We consider the total interaction they are undergoing when both of the molecules are at the bulk and when these two molecule pair. So, this is one molecule of 1 and one molecule of 2, a specific molecule of 1 and a specific molecule of 2 when they are at bulk versus when they are brought to the interface. So, let us identify a term, let us say P 1 2, we define it as energy of interaction of a pair of molecule at surface minus energy of interaction of the same pair of molecule at bulk. Remember, when at the surface, this pair actually interact with each other, right? It is this and this, a direct interaction between this and this. But when we take the respective molecules back to the bulk, they are not interacting with themselves anymore, but they are interacting with neighboring molecules within their respective phases. So, this molecule of 1, when it was at the surface was interacting with some molecules of 1, some molecules of 2 and the chosen molecule of 2, but when this is back to the bulk, it is only interacting with certain molecules, certain number of molecules of 1 the number of molecules, the number is given by the coordination number. Same is valid for this molecule of specific molecule of 2, when it was at the surface, it was interacting with the specific molecule of 1 and some molecules of 2 and some molecules of 1, but when it is back to the bulk, it is only interacting with some molecules of 2. So, we write this as E s minus E b. Uh, which is a pairwise excess energy. Why excess energy? Because we argue that 
the nature of interaction when the molecules were at the surface are going to be different than the nature of interaction when the molecules are at the bulk. Hmm. So, that is why a sort of a pair wise excess energy. Now, let us define n equal to number of molecules at the surface per unit area. Therefore, simply what do you think this parameter is going to give? This parameter is nothing but total excess energy ascribed at the interface. And therefore, simply this is the interfacial energy, this is gamma 1 2. Okay. So, this is simple. So, this is the excess energy per pair and you know now know the number of molecules and number of pairs resting on the surface. You multiply this per term with the number of molecules per unit area, you get the interfacial energy. Fair enough. Now, this is still a expression and if we want to evaluate it, what needs to be done? We need expressions for E s and E b. So, let us try to do that. And for that, what we do? Let us say Z11 is the coordination number in phase 1, uh, and V11 is the pairwise interaction potential between molecules of I am deliberately writing it in front of you uh, as if I am using the blackboard in the class. I never give this presentation in the form of a PPT, because if you write the terms then you sort of tend to get a very clear idea what are we talking about. So, essentially what Z11 gives is this particular coordination number and individual interaction, the energy of interaction between these two molecules of phase 1 are given as V11. Uh, question to ask is what are the components of V11? Of course, now we know from our initial discussion, Van der Waals forces must be present and then depending on the structure, the nature of the material, you can have the polar interaction also. You can have particularly for long chain polymers, uh, you can have some sort of steric interaction that is interaction uh, due to uh, the structure of the molecules. A simple example is that th th there can be effects like entanglement. Now, what is entanglement is like when you are having noodles, let us say, and you try to have it with a fork. There might be certain uh, strings of noodles that might fall down from your uh, fork, and that is because that particular st uh, string of noodles is entangled with the bulk uh, resting on your plate. So this is some sort of a very uh, simple example of what is entanglement, but when you are having rice with a spoon, um, this never happens. Whatever you pick up, it actually gets transferred to your mouth, because these are now very small entities, rice are small as compared to threads of noodles and therefore, there is no effect of entanglement. So, uh, I, I, in principle for long chain molecules, uh, there can be some steric in, uh, interactions like entanglement effect, uh, but then again uh, these are research level topics and uh, for, for our discussion, we will uh, keep our uh, discussion limited 
to Van der Waals and polar interaction only. So, what I mean what is important coming back to context is the you have a coordination number z 1 1 for phase 1 and the interaction between two molecules. So, that also should make you think about what are the other parameters you need to fully define in order to obtain expression for E b. Because E while talking about E b, you are considering the interaction of this molecule here and this molecule here. So, the other parameters that you need to write an expression for E b is z 2 2 and v 2 2. That is the coordination number in phase. So, I use the same expression and avoid writing. So, z 1 1 is the coordination number in phase 1, z 2 2 is the coordination number in phase 2, v 1 1 is the pairwise interaction potential between molecules of 1 and v 2 2 is the pairwise interaction potential between the molecules of 2. So, in principle uh, we just uh, additionally consider that uh, if we are considering an attraction it is always negative. So, therefore, the expression for E b turns out to be minus z 1 1 v 1 1 minus z 2 2 v 2 2. Similarly, let me uh, make you think what are the parameters you need to define uh, in order to get an expression for E s and it turns out that the parameters you need to define are z 1 2 that is coordination number of 1 with molecules of 2 at the surface. Similarly, you need to also define a v 1 2 that is the pairwise interaction potential between a molecule of 1 and 2 and it is obvious that this interaction is possible only at the interface, it is not possible anywhere else. Uh, so, essentially what it talks about is the z 1 2. So, this is the coordination number or the number of molecules of 2 surrounding a surface molecule of 1 or an interfacial molecule, molecule that is molecule of 1 that is resting at the interface. But that does not uh, give you the full picture because you also need to consider the number of molecules of 1 that are surrounding this particular molecule of 1 and therefore, you need to also define the surface coordination number in phase 1. So, I will take a minute uh, for a sort of an informal discussion. Please convince yourself if you understand the difference between these three terms clearly. So, z 1 1 essentially you are talking about the coordination number here for a molecule surrounded entirely by molecules of 1 in the bulk. Z 1 2 is the coordination number with respect to one molecule of 1, how many molecules of 2 it is directly interacting with when the molecule of 1 is at the surface. But this molecule you can see is interacting with some molecules of 2, the coordination number of which is given by Z 1 2 and some molecules of 1, the coordination number of which is given by z 1 1 s. Similarly, when you talk about this particular molecule of 2, you again need to define two different coordination numbers and that those are z 2 1 and z 2 2 s. So, this is the coordination number of number of a molecule of 2 with molecules of 1 and this is a coordination number surface coordination number uh, 
uh, in phase 2. Only thing that you may want to look of course, you need a v 2 1 and it is very logical that v 1 2 is equal to v 2 1, but until and unless you assume something and that is exactly what we are going to assume next. So, I do not want to uh, talk too much about it until and unless you assume there is no reason for z 1 1 s z 2 2 s z 1 2 and z 2 1 to be same. they may be different. Okay. So, I will repeat we are talking about pairwise interaction a term we have defined a term P 1 2, which is essentially the pairwise excess energy between molecules at bulk and at the surface. So, it is the energy of interaction of a pair of molecule at the surface minus the energy of interaction of a pair of molecule at bulk it is written as E s minus E b. Now, if you know the number of molecules present at the surface which let us say is n, you in fact get an expression for the interfacial energy gamma 1 2 straight away as n times E s minus E b. But in order to evaluate this you need to have expressions for E s and E b and we were building concepts. So, in order to have an expression for E b where we essentially consider the in this interaction and this interaction only we need to know the bulk coordination number of in phase 1 and the pairwise interaction energy between molecules of 1. And similarly, the bulk coordination number of phase in phase 2 and the pairwise interaction potential or interaction energy between molecules of 2 and if you define that appropriately, you get an expression for E b as this. Similarly, in order to obtain an expression for E s, we need to define the different coordination numbers like the cross coordination numbers I would say z 1 2, z 2 1, z 1 1 s and uh, z 2 2 s. Of course, we just need to define a v 1 2. Uh, these interaction energies remain same, these are same as v 1 1 and v 2 2, there is no change in that. So, let us write an expression for E s and you see if you can convince yourself. So, I will just rewrite we already have an expression uh, for E b and we are now writing an expression for E s as you can figure out from the uh, symbols we have defined E s is going to have four uh, components and that is interaction of molecule this molecule with all molecules of 2, interaction of this molecule with all molecules of 1, this molecule interaction with 2 and this molecules interaction with 1. So, we are going to have 4 components in E s and the, comp the, the full expression is going to be z 1 1 s of course, the minus sign comes in because we are considering an attractive interaction z 1 1 s v 1, z 2 2 s v 2 2 minus z 1 2 uh, v 1 2 and z 2 1 v 2 1. Now, of course, we will do some simplification, but amongst the all the expressions the only real thing that obviously happens is v 1 2 is v 2 1. Now, we do some approximations and what we consider is that uh, these are assumptions or simplifications. The first assumption that we make is z 1 2 equal to z 2 1. The logical and you know when many of the derivations you need to have some simplifications which are quite ok. We also assume that z 1 1 s is equal to z 2 2 s. Third assumption we make is the coordination number, the bulk coordination number in the two phases are same as something like z. Once we get this and if you look into the picture, it is so here the coordination number z 1 1 has been assigned uh, considered to be same as z 2 2 and both are equal to z. 
uh, it is sort of logical you can consider it to be logical or you can consider it to be some sort of a simplification that z 2 1 z 1 2 both are equal to half z and this also follows that the surface coordination number of z 1 1 s and z 2 2 s are also half z. So, these are simplifications, but if you draw a neat picture like the one I have drawn over here, you can pretty well convince yourself that this is not too much of a problem. Of course, if you can uh, always consider that uh, you have molecules of different size and therefore, the coordination numbers are different and therefore, you have every logic, every reason to consider that and that is that is the reason why we defined in fact, two different variables z 1 2 and z 2 1, but let us say for simplification uh, this this is uh, this is uh, something that is valid. So, if you consider that uh, then what we get we get a simplified expression for E b as minus z into v 1 1 plus v 2 2 and E s to minus z by 2 v 1 1 plus v 2 2 plus 2 v 1 2. See, we are not considering v 1 1 equal to v 2 2, because we understand that if the materials are different, the intermolecular interactions are going to be different. And as long as you do not assume that, that v 1 1 and v 2 2 are same, you are quite ok. You trust me, you are quite ok. So, from these expressions, you can get an expression from gamma 1 2 combining the fact that uh, this is equal to n uh, E s minus E b, which turns out to be, uh, if you write the expressions here, uh, z n by 2 v 1 1 plus v 2 2 minus 2 v 1 2. Now, what is v 1 1? In fact, v 1 1 and v 2 2 are the interaction energies within the bulk. So, these are sort of energy of cohesion and this is v 1 2, this is the interface. So, this is the adhesive part of the energy. Okay. So, now we do some bit of and, and what is important that this v 1 1 or any v i j comprises of the van der Waals interaction of course, and it may also might have polar interactions. So, it is something like v 1 1 L w plus v 1 1 a b, uh, L w stands for the van der Waals interaction, a b is the polar interaction or as it is called the acid base interaction and something like that. Okay. So, we will consider it, but as we have already agreed that the van der Waals interaction is the most general one. So, first we will only consider a case with van der Waals interaction and then we will further add the concepts, but before that we do a some, some bit of additional maneuver with the equation which we have in our hand we have this now suppose we consider though we have started our consideration based on an interface between two non condensed phases suppose we consider that one of the phases is uh, i'm sorry we have started our discussion uh, based on the interface between two condensed phases, suppose we consider one of the phases is non condensed. That is, uh, let me have the picture here also for our understanding. Let us consider one of the phases to be non condensed, uh, like it can be either a gas or a vacuum or whatever. Uh, let us say one, let us 
first I consider phase 1 non condensed. What does it mean? It means V 1 1 is going to be 0 and V 1 2 is going to be also 0, because there are not now adequate number of molecules present in this phase right, uh, for interacting with molecules of 2. And as a consequence this gamma 1 2 in the expression in fact, changes to gamma 2. So, we by a little clever manipulation we get a expression of gamma 2. Uh, we considered this to be a negative interaction. So, we just take the modulus value just do not worry about because surface tension can never be negative. Similarly, by considering phase 2 to be you can uh, also not worry about this modulus value at all phase uh, 2 to be non condensed. we actually get gamma 1 in that case what happens is V 2 2 becomes 0 and V 2 1 equal to V 1 2 becomes 0. So, again you get gamma 1 as I am sorry there is a small mistake here this will become V 2 2. This turns out to be V 1 1. And, uh, now, if you substitute back these two expressions in this equation, let us say equation 1, what we get is gamma 1 2 is equal to gamma 1 plus gamma 2 minus z n v 1 2. So, I will start further discussion from this point in the next class and we will see we will get an expression of the interfacial components and then we will start it considering the van der Waals forces and the van der Waals interaction and the polar interaction. Thank you.